Okay. There are more gray hairs on my cunt this year. <laughs> this year than there were last year. Suffice it to confess, I also have less cash in my account and more flesh on my ass and my hips and my thighs. Every day, every week, every decade, I note the measure of less or more. Whore that I am for such comparison. I wonder what it means to be thicker here, thinner there, or becoming one with gravity in globules, falling more freely than they did when my body didn't matter to me so much. You know, my art and my politics used to get me up in the morning. But literally, Zuri gets me up every morning and keeps me moving all day. And at first you find that exhausting and, but you look up one day and you think, my God, this is the best thing. I have something that gets me up in the morning and keeps me busy all day and something that I enjoy tremendously. Few people in the world can say that. Ready? Up. Zuri's life is already charmed. And, and that is not to say that she will not have many difficulties. Difficulties being the kid of a woman who a lot of people find controversial. The fact that I went and had a kid by myself as a lesbian, you know, with IVF um, when I didn't have a lot of money and blogged about it. Um, <laughs> Don't drop me back in there, okay? I was born to a black Jamaican woman from very poor circumstances. My father was a fairly well-off Chinese man of upper middle class Montegonian circumstances, I suppose. She says he raped her. He says he remembers an interaction in a car, in a parked car. Nine months later, there arrives a child of half black, half Chinese descent. People who are close to my mother said that my mother had a penchant for men with money because she was very poor and looking for a way out of that poverty. And others go on to say that my father liked young, pretty women and my mother was young and beautiful. And normally, if a woman says I'm raped, I usually would believe her until it becomes apparent that that is not so. But because my mother has such a, such difficulty with truth telling and even telling the difference between what is truth and what is not, and a long history of distorted stories about her past, about my life, that I'm reticent to trust everything she says. As soon as I was born, my mother left Jamaica. She left me and my brother, who was two years, who is two years older than I, with my grandmother, who was 60-something years older than I at the time. Um, we ended up living with her for about four years before she had to move in with relatives. And after that, we moved in with some people who were not, who were not necessarily kind to us. Um, and there began a series of homes that I entered and left, which of course informs my sense of not being rooted, my sense of not having family that cares about me, that is invested in my welfare. And I suppose those are the kinds of things I worry that I will bequeath to Zuri unknowingly, those tensions. One of the things I had to realize dealing with Zuri, you know, um, friends of mine called up and said, I have some things that doesn't fit my kid anymore and they're in pretty good condition. Can we bring them over? For the first maybe decade and a half of my life, I primarily had things that came from other people who no longer needed them. 
hand-me-down, second-hand things. And so I had an issue with it. And by the time I became an adult, I knew that I didn't want to wear anything that someone had worn before because it reminded me too much of the horror of my childhood when I had to wear things that didn't fit, when I had to wear things that other people would point out in the street that used to belong to them. The kind of trauma around that, I carried that for myself and I always liked to just get my own things with a tag on it, cut the little plastic thing off and tear the paper off and, you know, wear it for the first time crisp, new. I had a, you know, I had a, a kind of knee-jerk response like, I don't want my kid wearing like things that other people had worn and discarded and with stains on them or rips or you know even if it was unmarked and I had an issue with it I don't want I had an issue with it I didn't want it to be for my kid the second month came in and I realized how quickly she was going through clothes and I was like this makes no sense to, to, to be buying new things every time she needed them when she could actually just be wearing something that another kid wore for a week or two weeks or three weeks or a month I started to see where Zuri wasn't Stacey Ann She's her own person, this is her journey, this is her walk. And I have to allow her at least the room to create her own issues without putting mine on her. You have to choose your family. Because sometimes the family you're born into isn't so supportive and understanding of who you are or who you choose to be. Like my pregnancy was super hard. I was in bed all the time and I went to the hospital 26 times. But I had a team of really amazing people who stood around and fucking just held on to it with me. Now I struggle about writing about, you know, like I, I struggle with try, trying to find this fierce motherfucker who is a mom as well, you know, I spend all my days going coochie coochie coo, you know what I mean? Like, oh my god, you're so cute. Yes, that's so nice, honey. Oh my god, look at this, the best rock I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, people are having this debate about whether you're born gay or if you choose it. And my response is, what does it matter? You know, some people are born without a desire to be with the opposite sex and that makes them gay from the jump. And there are those of us who meandered through our first two decades and then landed upon a truth that was, I really like this better, I will choose this. I remember this moment being in, in the class and watching this remarkably sexy woman who I had kind of been friends with, sort of, but loosely speaking friends. We'd just all just gone into college. And I remember watching her chew on her pencil and feeling the bottom of my stomach flutter because the way of her mouth was moving around the pencil. And I remember thinking exactly, I wish I were a pencil. And the minute I thought, I wish I were a pencil, I was like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? What do you mean? And it all kind of like, came crashing into me like, oh my God, when I was 15 and I was so annoyed because my best friend was, you know, having this boy like her and she was all at dinner with him and I was upset about it and was crying like, oh my God, I had a crush on her. And when our English teacher left and I was beside myself and could not sit, I was just like prostrate on my desk weeping like, oh my God, she's going and now we're not gonna have anybody to teach us to kill a mockingbird, oh my God. That was exactly what it was. I had a crush on the woman and she was leaving. So in essence, I was going through a breakup with a woman who wasn't in a relationship with me, which is kind of lesbian. The first couple of times I told people, my friends were, for the most part, supportive. And the wider the circle got that I told, the more hostile they became. And the hostility from the wider circle made my friends who were closer to me pull away from me. It became messy. I lost almost every friend I had. I became more and more defiant. I cut my hair off. And when the rumors started flying about about my sexuality, I confirmed them and flaunted it. And Because uh, I was excited to have discovered who I was. And angry that there was no celebration and cocky. You know, I had survived so much. I was so strong. I was so funny. I was so everything. This one thing could not possibly be used to define me. Come on. That 
difficult time culminated in a, a bunch of boys dragging me into a bathroom on campus and sexually assaulting me. When I kind of found my breath after that, I decided to come to America, to come to New York City to... I didn't see how it was possible to go back in the closet after that. Luck or caprice, misfortune or serendipity, I fell upon the poets, the beatniks, the rabble-rousers, the dissenters, the fringe, odd group of poets and artists that lived in New York City. It's one of the tragic, wonderfully, beautifully, amazing, horrific, astounding things about youth. You just jump. Hi! Hey! Who's on lights? You're not young enough to be toting around kids, most of you, but I have a, a, an 18-month-old, 20-month-old that I'm running around with, and so she, you know, she demands your attention all the time. It's like having a lover, but none of the perks. Um, haiku on turning 30, and this is a decade ago. Look at me, writing poems. Lobbying to make boobs sexy when they sag. <laughs> Haiku on being the only lesbian from Jamaica. <laughs> Wonder whose pussy I was eating when I had a peel box there. I miss Jamaican women. I miss Jamaican women like a motherfucker. I wonder sometimes what I would have been like had I grown up and lived in Jamaica as a lesbian if I had done it in resistance in terms of what's happening there now if I kind of lived through that and also if there was nothing to live through if it was an open space to begin with and I'd lived there under the sun completely inside of those accents and those relationships I had then who would I be if I could be like a, 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 a purebred, born, raised, lived in Jamaica lesbian? I wonder about that. Though my father moved in and out of my life in a kind of peripheral way, it was my mother's absence that marked me. Though I have had beautiful men, wonderful men love me, and treat me with the kindest hands. It is my experiences with women that have kept me, I don't know, sitting on the edge of something deeply resonant with life, with power, with passion. There's something about women that make me sit up. There's something about women that make me want to do things that are impossible, want to promise things I know I can't keep. <laughs> I'm a sucker for a woman who's gorgeous and who smells like good politics <laughs> and she doesn't have to have a beautiful voice but she must love singing. And give me a woman who wants to change the world and I will give you, I will show you the woman I will chase. <laughs> I love that I have been radical and I have been the person to say the unsayable. I love how potty my mouth has been. I love how easy I am now. I love how much I know who I am. You know, I don't know if the young radical who didn't give a shit about anything and who would not think twice about like doing anything, I don't know if she'd be a good mom for Zuri. So maybe it is okay for us to grow and change and shift and do different things. And maybe that trajectory, maybe that journey is what life is about, you know. No justice, no peace! Right, that's good. That's very good. Let them 
charge me with getting older and caring less and less about what they fucking think of me. Pussies shouldn't just get older. They should get more irreverent, more indomitable, more impenetrable, more impassable, more immune to the sexist bullshit they bestow on us when we are born. Here's to resisting the dominant narrative. Here's to choosing your own path. Uh, here's to rebelling uh, for our fucking cause here to doing it for our fucking lifetime here's to doing it till your motherfucking dead